really fucking loud, guys. Jeez Louise. Unbelievable. Unfucking believable. It's okay, we're the only people up on the planet. God, I don't have any respect for anything. folks from Trent Sizemore, Jack Sizemore's Travel Land, where we've been helping people make memories with friends and family for over 42 years in brand new RVs like this. Beautiful Winnebago Aero on a Mercedes diesel chassis. Travel in luxurious comfort across the United States or the world. And speaking of luxurious world travel, Airstream, the name synonymous with quality for 85 years. And remember, a Jack Sizemore's Travel Land will beat any deal anywhere. Voicemail to email from Sunlink Home Phone. Your home phone messages automatically go straight to your email. David, it's your mother. Call me. Bye. Hi, Pookie Bear. Can't wait for a date tonight. So no matter where you are, you can easily listen to them right away. David Dan Wilcox here, calling to set up that job interview. Assuming you still want to leave those clowns you work for now. <laughs> Voicemail to email. One more way suddenly keeps getting better. Spurlock, Inside Man, Fridays at 10 on CNN. Two men entered the Istanbul airport. They pulled out their weapons. They started to fire. Then they detonated bombs. Another man then did it in the parking lot. Right now, 41 people have lost their lives. Over 230 are injured. So those numbers will most likely change. This happened in one of the world's busiest airports. Imagine being on your screen right now. That scene, people not knowing what's going on, and then the explosions and the aftermath, which lasted a long time. What was like? Joining us now from Istanbul, Lawrence Cameron, who is coming off a flight in Istanbul when the explosions went off. He is a video journalist who has covered Afghanistan and Ukraine. Uh, Lawrence, how are you this morning? How are you feeling? Good, thank you. So, not had much sleep, but um, everything's quite calm right now, which is a little surreal um, as opposed to the scenes we, we saw here last night. I'm, you know, watching that footage back, it's, uh, it's crazy to think everything's kind of back to normal now. We've been remarking on that this morning. I want to talk to you about what the experience was like inside, but the timing here is relevant also, especially on the heels of Brussels, where, you know, it took days for the airport to get back on its feet because of investigation and just the practicalities on the ground here, they're already back up and running. What does that tell you? I guess the Turks are just trying to move on as quickly as possible. I was in the airport this morning looking for my lost luggage, and they just put a panel up. They were sweeping up debris, 
and someone hung a big Turkish flag pretty much right at the spot where the where the bomb had gone off as a sort of act of defiance, um, which was quite moving really, a lot of people taking photos and a real sense that everyone was, you know, just, you know, carrying on as normal and, and you know, obviously to, to remember what happened and the awfulness of it, but to think, you know, the best way to defeat this is, I guess, to, to just carry on. I talked to some pilots this morning in my hotel and they said, yeah, we're ready to, we're ready to go, ready to fly, um, you know, everything, everything back to normal as much as it can be. You get off the plane, you get into the airport, you see the scene. Describe it for us. So I didn't actually hear the explosion. I, I, I had a very pleasant flight, a couple of whiskeys, watched a movie, and, I, and I, I got up and grabbed my bag. And as I came out of the, of the, uh, the sort of walkway that leads up into the main terminal, I just heard these screams. I turned around the corner, and it's just this wall of people running towards me, you know, tripping over themselves, police with guns out. Um, in the middle of it all, there was some old chap in a wheelchair, just sort of, I mean, just horrendous, really. You know what, it's pure panic. I'm sure it had to be a moment of pure panic, and you were seeing it on their faces, and you also got a sense of the range of injuries uh, that these explosions caused. What did you see? Uh, to be honest, Chris, I, we were on the side with, of the, of the um, passport inspector. We, we didn't see... We, no one on our side was actually hit. The worst, all the damage was, was the other side of the passport gate. So if you imagine in an airport, you know, the, the passport control is very heavily guarded and, and clearly um, the attacker, I guess, had got close to it, but he hadn't got through. So actually on our side, initially, no, no one was hurt. It was just, just pandemonium. It was only until we were finally let out that he started to see blood on the floor, uh, people coming out, you know, holding rags to their head, holding, uh, holding, uh, holding on their arm and, and so forth. Do you think that that was uh, the weapons that you saw with your familiarity of being in places where you see hostilities all the time, do you think that they were injured from glass shards and the, and, and the material of the airport? Or do you think it was about the bombs themselves and what they may have been uh, had in there in terms of frag? You know, I'm not a, I'm not a ballistics expert, but I, I would assume from looking at the building itself, a lot of shattered glass, a lot of ceiling panels had fallen down, um, even all the way out to the baggage carousel, you had debris on the floor. Um, so I can only assume that, that a lot of those injuries were caused by, by, by glass, by masonry, by, by plaster. How were people handling it? How was the response? Um, you know, as, as you'd expect, just panic and people, everyone asking what's happened, what's happened in a, in a number of languages. And uh, I guess the worst thing was, was when the police were following us out of the, of the airport. You know, clearly there have been families that have been split up, tour groups that have been split up, uh, friends that have been split up. People were, you know, looking back uh, towards the airport, shouting names, and the police were pushing them out and they're getting in arguments so over wanting to go back in and, and, you know, whether or not they've been killed or injured or just you know, lost in the, in the, in the sort of chaos is, is anyone's guess. When you see an attack like that and how they did it, and they were before security, and they just came out of a cab, started to shoot, detonated themselves, do you think that that is the kind of thing that you can be 100% safe from in today's world? No, I, I, I don't think so. I mean, where do you where do you push the security barrier? Do you then stop people on the main road coming into the airport, and they'll attack that? And then do you keep going to the next? I mean, where do you, where does it end really? I, I don't see beyond stopping these things prior to them actually happening through good intel or or whatever else. I, I don't. I, I, you can't really prevent this kind of thing if, it, if it's going to happen on on a, such a busy intersection. If we're going to have free travel and be able to move so many people through these through these places. I, I don't really see how, how else you do it. And that's why how quickly you respond becomes, you know, one of the measures of defense that you show that it didn't have the impact that the terrorists wanted to have. Lawrence Cameron, thank you very much for joining us. I'm glad you're safe. Appreciate uh, you telling us what happened inside that airport. Alice. Well, the Istanbul attack, just another reminder of how dangerous the world feels right now. Next up, David Axelrod on how terror impacts this presidential race. My experience with USAA is awesome. Homeowners insurance, life insurance, automobile insurance, 
I spent 20 years active duty. They still refer to me as a gunnery sergeant when I call. Being a USA member because of my service in the military, to pass that on to my kids is something that makes me happy. My name is Rush Zapata, and I'm a USA member for life. USAA, we know what it means to serve. Get an insurance quote and see why 92% of our members plan to save for life. them sitting around the table or wherever they're eating their dinner talking about the Americans don't do waterboarding and yet we chop off heads. They probably think we're weak, we're stupid, we don't know what we're doing, we have no leadership. You know, you have to fight fire with fire. That is Donald Trump renewing calls for waterboarding after the Istanbul terror attack last night. So how does terror Take up the 2016 race. Let's ask CNN senior political commentator and former senior advisor to President Obama, David Axelrod. David, great to have you here. Good to be here, yes. So conventional wisdom holds that terror attacks, like we saw last night, uh, increase enthusiasm for a Donald Trump presidency. There's a new Quinnipiac poll out just this morning that seems to reflect that. Um, which candidate would be more effective handling ISIS? 52% say Donald Trump, 39% say Hillary Clinton. What do you think? I think that the great thing about presidential races is there is always a poll to support whatever argument you want to make. The Washington Post had uh, Hillary with a 12-point edge in terms of dealing with terrorism. So it's hard to say, look, Donald Trump basically treats every problem in the world like a nail, and he's the hammer. And that has appeal when people are feeling insecure. So events like this that may make people feel uh, more insecure uh, could benefit him. On the other hand, uh, there is this uh, sense that Hillary is more measured, perhaps more you know, presidential, uh, and more equipped to deal with these kinds of issues in the real world. Uh, the temperament issue has dogged Trump 
uh, in the last few weeks, and whether he has the temperament to deal with an unstable world, or whether he would add more instability, is the counter-argument, and it's not clear which argument will win. Well, what do you see over time, Peter, is that when they, there's a disconnect between who the voters or whoever responds to the poll thinks would be the better commander-in-chief versus who would be tougher on ISIS. Yes. So, how do you deal with that? Political. Well, ultimately, he's going to have to. He's going to have to speak to what that means, being tougher on ISIS. Uh, the fact is that ISIS's territory is shrinking, uh, and that's one of the reasons why they're lashing out. Right, but the but, but their attacks are increasing. He right. said yesterday, they do whatever they want. They're savages. We have our hands tied, and we're too civilized. No, I understand that. No, I understand it's a very like visceral, it's a very visceral appeal. But the question is, what happens when the next question comes, which is. Okay, what does that mean? What are you going to do about it? What would you do differently? Waterboarding isn't really a serious uh, answer to a lot of these questions. I'm not sure that anyone would argue that water waterboarding, we don't even know whether this was a coordinated attack, a, a, you know, a command and control kind of attack, or whether this was, uh, or how it was planned. So it's, it's really, you know, as this goes on, I, I think what happens in presidential races is the tests get harder month by month. And once you reach those debates, you don't have to answer questions in a more than a visceral way, I think, to win the day. And he hasn't yet fleshed out those, 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 those approaches. Well, Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump even had different approaches to talking about it last night. So Donald Trump had a rally in Ohio. He came out to the podium. He spoke about it in front of, there you saw, hundreds, maybe thousands of people. Hillary Clinton put out a written statement. So do you, what do you think about how effective either of those are? Well, this goes back to the point that I raised earlier, which is uh, there's no doubt that he knows how to make a visceral appeal, and uh, the appeal he made last night may have connected uh, with voters. And there are others, uh, there are other voters, I'm sure, who are concerned about uh, whether uh, he is presidential in the sense that he can deal with these things in a measured, thoughtful right, but in politics, way. Does emotion win? Does the emotion and the visceral appeal after the ballot box win? Well, that, I think when you get close, closer to the presidency, I do think people start measuring candidates based on whether they can see them in that office. So I think that's the big question you raise. Can he overcome those questions about his temperament and preparedness? Through, uh, you know, raw, visceral appeal. You need both, though, right? In 2008, I remember uh, then Senator Obama had been very measured. I remember. <laughs> I know you did. I'm asking you, actually. He was very measured about what you would do with Pakistan. Pakistan was a big focus then. Uh, there was a belief at the time that they were really being used as a transit yeah. place for terrorists or deputy troops. And he had been keeping an arm's length on that, you know, well, look, we got to be careful. They're a big ally in the region, big ally in the And in an interview, I kept pushing him, what if Osama bin Laden was in there, and they, what would you do? Would you go in? Would you go in if they weren't doing it? And eventually, it was forced for him, but he said, yeah, we'd go in. And you guys made it a point of the election, and you start talking about it. Clinton immediately turned around and said, hey, you have to be strong. If Iran pointed missiles at us, we would obliterate them. People want to hear. No, well, actually, it was a little bit different. I remember it a little bit differently, which was he said, we knew where Obama, uh, uh, where, where Osama bin Laden was, and we had actionable intelligence, and the Pakistanis were unable or unwilling to act, and I would go in after bin Laden, and actually he was reduced by uh, all the Democratic candidates. Oh, shit. Uh, 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 uh,